Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the best practices for uploading your book to KDP. So this is going to be perfect for you if you are brand new and you've never published a book before. But even if you do have experience, you may learn a few tips or tricks that maybe you didn't know that could actually help you to rank your book higher. So I'm going to take you over to my KDP dashboard right now and show you exactly what I do. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you open up your KDP dashboard is you want to come over to here where it says create. Go ahead and click on that. Next, you're going to come over to where it says Kindle ebook. We're going to do our ebook first. I generally always do the ebook before the paperback. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is choose your language. Okay, next, you're going to come down here to book title and you're going to put in your main title here and your subtitle here. So the best practice is to make sure that your main keyword is either in your book title, your main title here, or make sure that it is in your subtitle. Okay. Next, you're going to come down to series, and you're going to want to make sure that your book is in a series. Okay. So if this is your first book that you're publishing, it's not necessary really to do it at this time, but for your second book, you're going to want to make sure that you add it to a series. Okay. So series is a really powerful way for you to sell more books. And unfortunately, a lot of um, self-publishers do not use series properly, and they don't use it enough. So when you have your book in a series, if a reader likes one of your books, chances are they're gonna buy other books in your series. And Amazon will actually create a separate product page that will display all the books in your series. And it also has a buy button on that series page where they can purchase all your books at once. Okay, and that happens way more times than you might think it would. Okay, and that can really increase your bottom line. Okay, so what you would need to do is just go ahead and click on Add Series. You would go ahead and create a series here, or if you had an existing series, you would add it here. Okay, when you create your series name, um, a best practice is to make sure that your main keyword is in that series. For example, if your series was if your, if your book was about real estate investing, you would want to have um, real estate investing for savvy entrepreneurs series, something like that, right? So what's going to happen when you do that is all of the other books in your series are going to rank under that keyword, okay? Even if that keyword, real estate investing, is not in, the, in their main title or subtitle, okay? It'll still rank for that. Okay, so that's just another way for you to get more visibility for your book. Okay, next, um, edition number, you don't really need to do anything here. This is just in case, um, let's just say you updated your book at some point, maybe it was outdated. Um, you would update your book, reload it, and then you would put second edition on there. This would let your readers know that the book's been updated. Okay. Um, under author, you're going to put your primary name and last name or your pen name here. Okay. Next, under contributors, yeah, I don't generally use any contributors, but if you wanted to give credit um, to another author or to maybe an illustrator or your narrator, you would do that here. Okay. Next is your uh, description for your book. Okay, so generally I will have my description done um, beforehand and what I do is I will go to an HTML editor like this and create my whole description in here. Okay, and this allows me to bold it or italicize and make it real pretty. And then once I'm happy with the way it looks, I will copy it from here and I come back to um, Amazon here and I'll click on the source code and I will paste it in here like this. Okay, and then you can see all the source um, code in here. Okay, and then all you need to do is just click that again and then it will show you um, with all the source code and the bold and the italics in there. Okay, so like I said, I just it just saves me time. I don't like to do everything as I'm uploading the book. I have like to have everything prepared ahead of time. Okay, next. Uh, we have publishing rights. You want to go ahead and click on I own the copyright. Okay. So just so you know what a public domain is, that's generally reserved for books that were published prior to 1926 and no longer have copyrights. 
So books like um, Think and Grow Rich would fall under a public domain. Okay. Next, uh, for keywords, uh, there are some best practices for entering your keywords. So you get seven uh, main keyword boxes here. Okay, so you never want to put um, in your one of these boxes keywords that are already in your title or subtitle because they're already getting indexed. Okay, and you're not going to rank any more for it just because you're putting it in one of these boxes. Okay, I was guilty of doing that for a long time, thinking that it would give me extra um, it would give me extra weight for these keywords, and it just doesn't work like that. Okay. So how to best fill out the keyword boxes is this way. So you do not need to repeat any words over and over. So since you already have ketogenic diet in the title and, uh, or subtitle, you wouldn't need to keep repeating that word. Um, just the words, let's just say, if ketogenic diet for women, that, say that's your main title, but you want to um, add over 50, and that is another keyword you would only need to add over 50 because ketogenic for di diet for women is already here, right? So you would just need to add over 50, right? If, you, if another main keyword was ketogenic diet cookbook, you would enter it here. So you can enter as many keywords in these boxes up to 50 characters as you want, um, but you will get more weight for these keywords over here there's only one keyword per box, okay? So generally what I do is I will put all of my main keywords in their own box, and then for the balance of the keywords, I will enter them as many as I can into these other boxes, just like this, okay? So intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet for two, ketogenic diet you know, for diabetes, okay? And what Amazon will do is they will rearrange all of these keywords in all kinds of different orders. So they don't even need to be in order, okay? And that is generally how I enter my keywords, okay? So hopefully that made sense to you. Next, under categories, you can choose your categories here. You get two main categories that you can choose from. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is that Amazon actually allows you to have a total of 10 categories. Um, but you can only add two when you're uploading your book. So what you need to do is go ahead and publish your book, and then you can go ahead and send Amazon an email requesting to be added to additional categories. Okay, So that's a little secret ninja, ninja trick that many people don't know about. Okay, then next you're going to come down to age and grade range. I don't do anything here. I mean, you would do that if maybe if you were doing a children's book and it was... Um, targeting specific kids between a, a specific age, okay? You would enter that here. Okay, and then next, you want to come down and click on I am ready to release my book now, okay? Unless you're planning on doing a pre-order, I have never done one before, okay? So I'm just showing you what I do, okay? And then next, you're going to click on save and continue. Okay, on this next page, you want to come down here to where it says Digital Rights Management. You want to check off no, that you do not want to enable Digital Rights Management. Um, so just so you know what that is, it has to do with piracy, and it has more to do with the music industry than it does the book industry. There's not too many people who are pirating books. Um, but what happens when you do enable it is that uh, readers are not able to lend their books out to friends and family, and that becomes a real source of frustration for them. So you definitely want to be choosing no here, okay? Next, you're going to be uploading your ebook manuscript right here, and usually that's going to be done in a document form, so Microsoft Word um, or EPUB. Generally, all of mine are in um, Microsoft Word, okay? Next, you're going to come down here to where it says Kindle ebook cover. You are going to choose upload a cover you already have. Okay, you definitely do not want to be using their um, cover creator. You don't want to be doing this yourself. So you're going to come down here and you're going to upload it and it needs to be in a JPEG. Okay, next is um, you can preview what your book is going to look like. So once all of this uploads, you're going to come down here and it kind of makes you do it and you need to, to launch the previewer. I can't do it because I don't have any books in there, 
okay, but you launch the previewer and you can see what your book is actually going to look like. So if there's something that needs to be changed, you can go back to your uh, original document and make the changes and then re-upload it again, okay? And then as far as an ISBN goes, you do not need an ISBN for Kindle eBooks, okay? So just leave that blank, okay? And then come down here and click Save and Continue. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do on this page is you're going to come down here where it says Enroll My Book in KDP Select. You're going to make sure that that is checked. Okay, so essentially when you're enrolling in KDP Select, um, you are agreeing to stay exclusive to Amazon for three months. Okay, so you're agreeing that you're not going to be uploading your ebook to other platforms in that time frame. Okay, and in return, Amazon is going to give your book preferential treatment and your book will rank higher. Okay, the second reason why you want to enroll in KDP Select is because it allows you to run Kindle countdown deals and free book promotions, which are really important for promoting your book and keeping your book ranking high. Okay, uh, next you're going to come down to here where it says territories and you're going to choose all territories and this is going to allow you to sell your book worldwide and then you're going to come down to where it says primary marketplace you're going to choose your marketplace mine is amazon.com so I have that checked and then pricing and royalty so you have two choices here it's 35 percent and 70 percent so in order to get 70% royalty rate, you are going to need to have your book priced at $299 above. Okay. Uh, anytime your book is priced below $299, you're going to get this error here, and you're going to need to choose the 35%. Okay. So it, it really makes no sense whatsoever to have your book priced below $299. Um, the only time you would ever want to do that is if your primary goal or your purpose is lead generation. So you're not really concerned with royalties. Your primary goal is just to get leads. Okay. And so having that lower price is going to get you more leads. Okay. But uh, it is going to cost you more in royalties. Okay. So for the most part, you're usually always going to have your book priced at least $2.99 and above. Okay. And then you can check off the 70%. Um, now for the rest of these um, different currencies, what happens is once you price your book here in Amazon, um, they're going to convert it into um, the different currencies, okay, equal to $299, you know, in US. Okay, so you don't really need to do anything here, it's automatically done for you. Okay, and then next for book lending, you're going to make sure that allow lending for this book is checked. And this is going to allow friends and families to be able to lend their books out to one another. Okay. Next is terms and conditions. So it does take up to 72 hours for your book to become live once you publish. If this is your first book, it usually takes a little bit on the longer end, um, at least 36 hours to 48 hours before your book becomes live. So just bear that in mind. As you start publishing more books, it takes less time, usually somewhere between the 24 and 36 hour mark, okay? Once you click the publish button. Okay, now this, is, this was for your ebook. Your paperback is generally almost exactly the same with just a few exceptions, and I'm gonna show you what those are. Okay, and so on the paperback content page, the thing I wanted to show you here and point out was the ISBN. So you are going to need an ISBN for your paperback, but uh, Amazon does provide a free ISBN and you're perfectly fine to use that one. The only time you want to purchase an ISBN is if uh, you are uploading your book to a different platform, okay? Amazon does not allow you to use their ISBN for other platforms, okay? But uh, for the time being, if your book is just being uploaded uh, to Amazon, then just go ahead and use their free ISBN, okay? Next, um, for the print options, I usually choose the black and white interior with the white paper. Uh, for the trim size, for a 30,000 word book, I generally will choose a five by five uh, by eight by five uh, trim size. I usually find that this looks the best for that word count. I also choose a no bleed. And then for the paperback finish, 
it really depends on your book cover. So if you have a light cover, then you can use the matte, okay? But if you have a darker color, you want to use the glossy. And the reason for that is for some reason, the darker covers when they're in matte tend to leave a lot of weird fingerprints all over them. And you're gonna get complaints uh, from, your, from your customers about this, okay? Um, I don't know why that happens, but it happens a lot. So that's just another little ninja tip for you there, okay? All right, and then next, you're just going to upload your manuscript. Generally, I do upload that in a PDF uh, file. Um, and your book cover is also going to be, uh, also need to be in a PDF format, okay? And then when you're done uh, previewing it, you're going to uh, click on Save and Continue. Okay guys, so the last thing that I wanted to show you was on the paperback rights and pricing page. So if you scroll down to the pricing here, I just want to show you this extra column here, okay, for expanded distribution. So you wanna make sure that you check off that box, okay? So what that's gonna do is um, it's gonna allow Amazon to share your book on other stores like Apple and Barnes and Nobles and this way you will be getting sales from those other stores. Okay, and it also um, will share your book with libraries and uh, universities, and anytime they buy your book, you're gonna get some sales from them as well. Um, so the only time that you don't wanna have this box checked is if your book is uploaded on another platform that already shares it uh, with these stores, then you wanna make sure that this is not checked. Okay, or you can come back and uncheck it, okay? But until then, make sure it's checked, otherwise you're gonna be missing out on sales, okay? And it can be pretty substantial, okay? And that was pretty much it. That was the last thing I wanted to show you for the paperback. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever um, on this video, just leave your questions down in the comments and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Uh, meanwhile, you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.